Hello and welcome to the channel. I am Johnny Boy, and today we're continuing my retro video card reviews with the Radeon X1900 XT. Let's see how it stacks up against my last review of the 1600 GS. The X1900 XT debuted on the market on January 24th, 2006, offering a nice increase in performance compared to the X1800 XT that it replaced. It also launched alongside the X1900 XTX. Is that enough X's? <laughs> but the card was essentially just a factory overclocked X1900 XT. Now the card was generally well received upon release really showing it edging out NVIDIA's offering at the time, the 7800 GTX. And the only consistent negatives mostly pertain to the noisy fan and somewhat high temperatures. And even though I've heard this reference style Radeon cooler compared to a, a jet engine spinning up, I was still somehow surprised by the sound that this thing puts out when the fan kicks into high gear. When I first fired up the system with this card installed, I thought I was back on Ford Hood standing behind an M1 Abrams tank. And I do have to wonder what ATI was thinking with this one, although I do find the cooler oddly appealing and it does keep the Hellfire spawning R580 chip within safe temperatures. Now, the, the temps did soar up to about 84 degrees, and, and uh, I was able to fix that a little bit with a custom fan profile that lowered them down to about 74 degrees. Now, the sample we've got here today has 512 megabytes of GDDR3, a core clock of 621 megahertz, and a memory clock of 720 megahertz. Those core core and memory clocks seem a little odd compared to the default configuration of 625 and 725 megahertz, but I seriously doubt that the 4 and 5 megahertz difference on the core and memory uh, clocks are going to cause much of a difference at all that we're even going to notice in these benchmarks. And before I get deeper into the video, I need to go over the list of games, as it has changed since my last review. I decided to get rid of Call of Duty, because I didn't feel like it would be a good comparison down the road, since the 6800 GS just crushed that game. I then added Oblivion and Supreme Commander to the list. Now, I also did go back and test these two new games with the 6800 GS so that we would have results to compare to. And once again, I'm testing these games at their maximum settings, uh, starting at 1024 by 768, 1280 by 1024, and 1920 by 1080, unless specifically noted otherwise. The test system I'm using today is the same one that I used in the last video. It's an AM3 motherboard sporting a Phenom 2 X6 1100T, 8 gigabytes of DDR3, at 1333 megahertz and a 500 gigabyte western digital hard drive all running on windows xp service pack 3. first up is painkiller we could see a decent increase in the average frame rates over the 1600 gs but the minimum frame rates didn't exactly see the same improvement. I also had to use a bit of an oddball resolution of 1776 by 1000 due to 1080p not showing up as an option for some reason. But even at that resolution, the minimum somehow ended up being lower than the 6800GS at 1080p. And this is a little bizarre, but this, it's also the only game that yielded such an odd result. And the only thing that I can really point to this uh, lack of increase in performance, especially on the lows, 
is uh, a lack of good optimization from ATI's drivers for this game. In Half-Life 2, we see a much better boost in performance, and this game definitely favors ATI cards, but I was still surprised by the results in this one, especially considering this is the more demanding Steam version of the game. Now, every resolution shows a sizable increase, and 1080p would actually be playable if you lowered a couple of the settings to increase those minimums. Call of Duty 2 is up next, and with it, another great increase in performance. This game was a slideshow on the 6800 GS, but the X1900 XT puts its power to great use to pull out with some pretty solid numbers. For this game, I would say that 1280 by 1024 would be a good resolution to enjoy some great World War II action after adjusting a few settings. In Quake 4, the results from the X1900 XT are immediately apparent with this card actually running the game in all three resolutions. I also did notice a couple of graphical, graphical glitches with some metal grates not rendering randomly, so that could be kind of skewing these results a little bit in the, in the favor of this card, and I'm sure it's probably just a uh, driver issue, maybe a different version of the driver would um, alleviate that. Even still, this is another game where 1280 by 1024 looks to be the sweet spot to eliminate the Strog Menace with smooth frame rates. In Fear, we see yet again another great boost in performance, although I'm a little surprised by the relatively small increase in the minimum frame rate at 1080p and I'm not sure if 1280 by 1024 is the best bet with this one. I feel that you might have to lower too many graphical options to get solid frame rates, but it's doable nonetheless and ultimately up to one's opinion. Oblivion is a game that didn't run exceedingly well on either card, but the X1900 XT definitely pulls ahead with more competent frame rates. It also made it a lot easier to land hits on enemies than the stuttery mess that the 6800 GS was putting out. And overall, I'm quite pleased with these results and I'm glad that I decided to introduce this game to the list. Supreme Commander was another game that didn't run very well. In fact, I'll go ahead and say it, it ran horribly on both of these cards. Even the X1900 XT was unable to break into the 30s in the frame rate department. And I understand this game was a machine killer when it released. It was notoriously known for bringing even powerful machines at the time to their knees. And it definitely shows in these results. It was also a slightly difficult game to test being that it's an RTS and I ended up just using a save game where all of my forces have preset paths to plow through this small enemy base in an effort to try to make it an even playing field for both of these cards with every pass. Finally we have the infamous Crisis. The X1900 XT sees another huge jump in frame rates compared to the 6800 GS. It went from feeling like I was fighting internet lag in a single player game to a playable experience. Now, even though 1024 by 768 has what I would call very solid results, it looks like garbage at such a low resolution with bottom of the barrel settings. I mean, honestly, if this was all you had back in 2007, I would say that 1280 by 1024 wouldn't have been too bad if you were okay with those frame rates, but we're going to have to wait until I get to some better cards before we see solid frame rates at decent resolutions in this game. This was my first experience with the X1900 XT. Overall, I enjoyed using this card, and things went about as smoothly as any retro build can go with a couple of small issues along the way. 
Most notable was that for some reason I could not get both of my monitors to display at 1080p. One would, get, would display at 1080p while the other one would be limited to, to kind of an odd resolution just below 1080p. Although this may have been simply due to a driver issue. We saw some games become playable at higher resolutions than the 6800 GS, but a more powerful pixel pusher is still needed to get most of these games running silky smooth at their prettiest. That about does it for this video. Be sure to check back soon when we see if NVIDIA's answer to the X1900 cards actually delivers. Thank you for watching.